Hi, this is the Nuclear Rabbit and one of the questions I get asked the most on the channel is if I have done this run or that run or so and so run. It always ends up with me sending a link to a run I've done years ago. And I get it, this channel is over 2 years old. I wouldn't scroll back 2 years on someone else's channel either. So I decided to post compilations of all the older videos I've made, starting with the 2022 stuff and 2023 stuff. Some of these videos at this point are really dated and should probably be redone, but I have so many videos videos to make and so little time. Honestly, at this point I would need a team of people recording runs and another team editing to even keep up with the requested video queue, let alone catch up. Anyway, back to the point, these compilations will be sorted by character and all 7 characters will get their turn. I'm guessing I'm posting all of them in December, so seems like a nice way to kind of round out the year. That all being said, I hope you enjoy them and here they are. Hello, this is Nuclear Rabbit, and today I'm going to be playing a, uh, what does we call it, Singer Bob. We start off by buying two maces and getting our stealth, because you can't get a damaging war cry until level 30. So you kind of just have to play normal as any other builds you like. You can do anything you want, I don't recommend whirlwind. But for the rest, it's uh, you can do anything you want. So in the meanwhile, we are beating down Andariel after eating some antidotes. And yeah, and there it goes down fine, just nothing special going on yet. We then have our one and only almost death experience of the entire run. Because, well, this if, if you ever want to get a guaranteed guardian, this is the character for you. So the weapons I made are a steel and a tall, tall, tall flail. And I'm going to be using those for all of normal because, yeah, that kind of nuts. Uh, so uh, a thing I did that I kind of did by accident, this is player 5 Duriel. I forgot to turn back the player count. And yeah, you can see this is still perfectly fine. Like this character just doesn't really die. I ended up just not even bothering with battle orders in the in hell. So that until I had all of my damaging stuff uh, done. So that should tell you a lot. So in Act Three, then we found our amulet. It's a one war cry with 14 MF, 20 life, which is really good. We end up getting Osiris' boots as well, the iron heal, 20 run, 25 fire resist, very good, you can easily clear the game with We found this set bone wand, which is Sanders, which is a nice thing to use until you get spirit. The spirit will be after you get uh, level 30, because you can't get a 4 socket sword in normal. Well, you can from the cow level, but I don't want to use a socket quest for something I can easily find in nightmare. Anyway, we are at Mephisto. As you can tell, this character is doing perfectly fine. The 225 poison damage plus the open wounds really wears down a boss. And this is the best, bo best boss killing this character will ever do. So uh, enjoy, because th these are the short fights. <laughs> oh man, did I have some fights. Uh, then I decided I'm a gambling maniac and I decided to gamble circlets. And I actually got a live double rest uh, circlet. We, uh, yeah, then nothing else happens until we get to the Hellforge, where I get some stuff, which is, oh, an Atherum. I got an Atherum, yay. And I uh, fast forward to Diablo 5, because, yeah, these fights take forever, and I don't want the video to be an hour long. I, I actually ended up cutting some of the boss fights uh, footage in, in the later game, because one of my boss fights was literally 30 minutes, so. Anyway, this is Diablo normal, as you can tell. Just do a lot of dodging, go in for a hit, trigger the open wounds and the poison, and run away again. Uh, Diablo normal, very dangerous fight, as you can tell. But yeah, um, I needed to fast forward. This was like a 10 minute fight. This is literally me just draining Diablo of all his life. Uh, by tapping him every once in a while. Also, I do think he looks cool in green. Not gonna lie, I think he actually really looks cool in, in the poison color. Welcome back, my friend. Then we get uh, to level uh, level 30, so I respec into a singer uh, now. I, want, I was gonna do a singer guide originally, but I ended up just going singer. So this is my skill. I do have five in battle orders there because that's because I didn't realize how buff this character is. I ended up respecking in hell again and just getting rid of the bow until like level 70. Then I equip the Sanders and this is how every fight for this character looks. So, so yeah, lots of rah 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 going on. It's his rah 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 poker face. I don't know. But yeah, everything is just stunned. Like this character will not die. So I have bow here. But look at my life total, nothing is happening. Uh, that's just the, the whole thing for this character. Yeah, that's 
that's one. And that's two. Yeah, that, that, that's it. The, this character just doesn't give a fuck about anything. Like, this is one of the harder fights in normal, and it's like, yeah, have fun with that. There's gonna be a lot of just things being stunned. However, you can't can stun egg bosses, so this uh, yeah, this will be fast forward. This is build normal, and look how this goes. This is uh, if you want a pure magic finding character, this is not for you. However, if you want a character that's very safe throughout the game and can play everywhere, this is your character. You could. You could like get a mercenary and get him a lot of crushing blow, that would help. And the reason I had Berserk back was because I wanted to go and use a weapon and hit uh, physical immune. But you have so little attack rating and so little uh, damage from the attacking that it's just not worth I would not recommend specking it to Berserk at all. Yeah, we are now a destroyer. Destroyer. Then in hell of in uh, sorry in nightmare we get our helmet, our horned helmet with plus two battle orders, which we don't really need, but it's way better than what we're using. And we get our first four socket sword. So this is why I didn't want to use a socket quest. Something a lot of speedrunners do is go to the cow level and then find the four socket sword there. But you can very easily find them in the tower in nightmare, as you can tell. Like I'm not even done running the counters. For the runes and I already have the two sword. Uh, we found a gold skin as well, which is not very interesting for me because I want the faster cast rate. But yeah, so we uh, get a spirit and another spirit and now we have plus four skills, a lot of vitality, lots of mana and from this point on this character basically can't die. So here we are, Horking and Endarius so just rah rah rah. More rah rah rah. rah. And this, that, that's just all this character does really, just like stand there. The poison damage is hacking in though, that, I can't deny that, so lots of poison damage going on. And then, and then I use the socket quest because I found a bill and I'm gonna add four sockets to that so I can get my mana problems fixed by making a Ralt et al soul inside. We get for the meditation order, I don't really care about the damage on this or anything. And I get a new mercenary in Act 2 as well. Oh, I also use the one war cry that makes them deal less damage. So now I'm really just beyond tanky. And you can see the mana just being very doable now. I had to bring mana pots all the time before this. Also, I'm just standing in Duriel. That's kind of gross, not gonna lie. Like, I'm up his butt. And that's Duriel. I, I end up using my imbue on a demon hide sash. See if I get anything better than what I'm wearing. This is okay. It has resists. And I find a Lokaber axe, Lokaber axe, the meat scraper, which is a very powerful mercenary weapon. And I ended up just switching this for when I needed the open wounds and the damage on the mercenary. So I'm usually using the inside. Uh, yeah, in the meanwhile, we are killing Mephisto. As you can tell, I'm just not even bothering really doing anything and not taking any damage. This, yeah, I mean, we're, we're preventing like 40% damage at this point while being insanely tanky. It is weird though that you can stun everything but egg bosses. Like, there, there should be some mechanic there. Like, not fully stunning them, but you should be able to do something with them. Uh, one thing though, if you uh, want to play this character, you should. This is very fun. Uh, 
Also, we found the ball rooms, which is great. Diablo time. One thing I should mention that the inside does that you'll see later in the run as well is uh, the inside does elemental damage and that's what I end up using to get rid of physical immunes. You'll see it a few times but you mostly just really want to dodge physical immunes with this build because it's not very good against those. In the meanwhile we are uh, rattling down Diablo. It takes a while but I just wanted to give one not fast forward at five to just show like how long a random boss fight takes and this is a nightmare. We are Dealing most of our damage at this point. You can get some plus skills. We also found another sandwich, but we don't need it anymore. And then we get to Eldritch, where I find the best item I could ever find for this kid. I find the skin of the Viper Magi, the, and which, which is just an insane item. It's resist all, it's faster cast rate, it's plus skill. I immediately put some MF on it. And almost Horka Shaco. I'm not kidding. I almost went uh, Viper Magi Shaco. And then it's time for the Ancients or Nightmare, which are a very uh, stunning fight. I mean, well, yeah, if you don't like stuns, this run is gonna be very stun ish. <laughs> I hate myself for that joke, I'm so sorry. <laughs> But yeah, you can see how this is just basically free, right? Just make sure you don't run out of mana. Also, that fire damage was insane. But yeah, we uh, are fast forwarding build. This is once again times 8 or times 16, I can't remember, but just... <laughs> And then we are a conqueror. So what I decided to do in hell was, uh, oh yeah, first I did uh, this. As you can tell, you're not very good at dealing with uh, physical news. Also, this is the fastest my laptop will actually speed up the fight. This is times 32. So yeah, physical immunes are a problem. But the mercenary does get it done. After that I decide to grind the pits a bit because I want to get my damage to maxed out and meanwhile I find a Malrune, I found a Tal Rush as well a rather crash. I did like 20-25 runs or something and I found an Umrune as well. I end up not really using them. I also found a Trangul's armor which is nice. It's a cool armor. Like if I ever do a uh, summoning Necro I really hope I find this armor. It's so cool for that build. I found a Tal Rush as well. As well. Only 11% of math though, but it is what it is. And with that, this is my gear before I get into really getting into hell. So I'm gonna do like Andario now. I am pretty high level, I grinded a bunch. I really wanted to max out my uh, my damage from the war cry. So I've gone max uh, the war cry, max all the synergies, one in all the one point wonders. I removed the point from Berserk and stuff, I respect for it. And I just have all the- I have one in battle orders right now. I'll, I'll start pumping it up again because I'm just uh, wanting to, you know, like... I need to do something with my point. I max on resist and everything as well. And I'm just, yeah, not dying, so... Uh, yeah, that's the smith. 
here we are for Ontario. So the third time's the charm. Yeah, we don't really get below 3000 HP. This, yeah, if you ever wanted to get the achievement for clearing the game on hell with a hardcore character, but this is your character. This character is so tanky. It will not die. Fighting is just uh, spam the minus damage thing and then just yeah, do this. Yeah, just going through the boss fight. Nothing special happened in Act 2. And I just want to show off like how tanky this build is. This is Durial Hell. Yeah, we're basically on Twink. I found one skin of the Viper Magi, which is insane, but the rest of these items are really good. I could have easily done this with a stealth as well. Crawl up his butt and shot away. Just not even a threat. That's Durio, one of the hard hardest fights in the game. Well, this is Mephisto, which is not one of the hardest fights in the game. So one thing I do recommend if you play this character is just maxing out your damage first. You're you're insanely tanky no matter what you do, and your items are really cheap. Like you you can easily uh, clear the game with a stealth with this build. And yeah, I got lucky on the uh, skin of the Viper Magi, but you can just farm more. You know, like I end up pretty high level in this build, but that's because I wanted to max all the synergies because I wanted the damage. But you can tell this is not a lot of damage. So all in all, just a build that very much just. Yeah, slow and steady wins the race is what they say, and this build is the absolute living proof of that. Oh, also, I find drags. I forgot about that. I found drags. Here we go, hit faster the armor, also physical immune and just not happening, so I ended up respawning him. And this is Holy Priest, hit faster the armor with a bunch of minions around him. And this is just, I have a few fights in it that are just to show off how this build does in the rest of the game. And yeah, this is just how this character plays, like, hit faster is not hitting. And we have the Hellforge, I end up with a perfect emerald, the flawless diamond, the flawless ruby and a gall rune. And here we are for Diablo. And as I mentioned a few times already, not a great boss killer, but a very uh, safe one. So while I do have the time during this fight, if there are any builds you want me to play solo self down through the game, I always play hard. I don't enjoy the game on uh, software. I just don't. Like, I don't like games where I can't lose.
Uh, anyway, if you want me to play any sort of build, just let me know. So, yeah, let me know in the comments down below. I don't know why, why I put up that voice. In the meanwhile, Diablo falls over and dies. And here are the ancients really, really fast forward because this fight takes forever. But look at how safe this is. <laughs> it's like it's like a bunch of squirrels attacking or a bunch of birds or something. But yeah, this is the ancient hell fight, one of the, the literal hardest fights in the game, and this Bob don't give a shit about it. Although I do almost end up running out of mana, but I can deal with that. I'm just kind of pacing myself here with the uh, with the war cries to stun him because I'm just almost out of mana. That's actually quite a nice beat there. But yeah, as you can tell, this is just completely free. Like the entire game's free for this build. I mean, to give you an inclination about my stats, I have 3602 HP, I've basically max resist all, I believe. Yeah, like, nothing's gonna kill this. Oh, here we go. So yeah, max uh, fire, cold and lightning, nobody cares about poison, just buy antidotes. These are my skills. See, I started maxing battle orders. Oh, I also hawked a rare diadem. So, almost the griffins. And I did find a less rate, like this build is finding a lot of items for characters I don't have. So yeah, just hawking my way through the minions. I uh, ended up cutting this fight short. Guardian, congrats, see you in the next one, bye bye, don't forget to subscribe, thank you. Hello, welcome back for my next video, we are walking into the blood mall, we are stealth and we move along and see how very efficient this character already is, as we, uh, yeah, just take forever to kill stuff. So we head to off to Andario, where we, uh, yeah, just uh, beat her to a pub, to mazes. Uh, so the, the gist of this character is that I'm gonna try and build a barbarian in the sense of the synergy, so using the what you call the synergies instead of like battle orders like people usually do and we get to act two get ourselves some new weapons and then we go ahead and attack durio with them so we have a tall 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 flail and a uh, tier l a steel flail as well and those are just the weapons we are going to be using for normal we have open wounds and we have poison damage and that's all we get because getting weapons as a melee character is a disaster in this game so we fight Duriel, which is pretty nice, he bleeds out pretty quickly, we do deal a lot of damage right now though. And we get to the sewers in Act 3, and I just wanted to show this off because this is the actual best sewers map I have ever seen in my life. We literally just went left, and that's it, there it is. We killed the council as they almost killed us, we end up, end up at 5 HP, but we do get the flail and go to Mephisto. Where This is just this barbarian's way of killing things is just letting them bleed out. So lots of fast forwarding going on because these fights take forever. Temple of Sapphire Circle, which is good for our resistance. We also get a Rel or Hard Leather Armor, so we have some more resistance and we get our Health Forge. Then for Diablo, we fast forward this fight because it's a lot of bleeding out again. We just tap him lightly and then uh, wait for the damage to happen. And as you can tell, this is taking forever, and you just don't find any good weapons as a melee character in this game. You just don't. Like, you have to really work for them. And this is even with a combat shrine, don't forget that. And it's taking this long with a combat shrine. And 
we found an M rune and that gets us a strength and an M tier, which means that we get some crushing blow. We also try to repair our equipment. We get, I cannot repeat that complete uh, request. Apparently it's a bug. And we find a soul rune and make a lore. So the bug you can fix by just leaving the game and entering a new game. Then we go to the ancient. And we fast forward as well because we're still just bleeding them out. We do have the crushing blow from the M tier uh, room with the strength room with her. So it's a bit faster, but still, this fight takes forever. Melee uh, builds in this game are very underpowered. The casters are insanely good. But we beat the ancients. We move along to Bale and we try and beat him a bit and as you can tell this fight also fast forwarded. These fights just take forever. We just don't have that much damage. We have some open wounds, some crushing blow. Takes a while. But crushing blow is very good. You always want more crushing blow. You have like a list of mods that you want in this character. It's just... Crushing blow, resistances, life, stuff like that. Attack rating is very important. I always see people skimping on attack rating. You really don't want to. After beating Bill, we go ahead and go into Nightmare. Where we try and run the counters for the first time. And it's not very successful. We just do not have the damage to get through this. So we head back to Bail running on normal, where we try and yeah just beat Bail a bunch of times, which is not going very well either. So we grind a bit on random stuff and then head up back to the counters for some runes. And here's the first thing that you really notice on the Frenzy build using the synergy. You, you use taunt, because that's what the synergies demand of you. But you... You just want to run into stuff. Like Frenzy is very much like run into things. Beat them down very quickly. Run into things again. But Taunt just makes you pull them apart. Kite a lot. Which is fun as well. But the problem with Taunt is it can target champions. And it can target act bosses. So you're like well yeah I have a skill that doesn't do anything against any of the monsters that I wanted to. So they should either remove the synergies from Frenzy. Because it has way too many. And move them onto battle orders and shout. So you can just run in and be like super tanky and running in. So that taunt can target champions and axe bosses and super uniques. What, either either one of those would work. But what you what you're seeing now is just a character that just can't use its main war cry on anything that it really wants to, and it's really hampering the character. And this is only nightmare and Dario. We get a mercenary in Act Two, a Holy Freeze one. Just checking the options a bit. And then we move along for some more Antario farming because we need the equipment. I do find a rock fleece on the way to her. And then I just show off my skills a bit. So Frenzy has way too many synergies. You need Frenzy, Double Swing Taunt, Increased Stamina and Berserk and the synergies. Uh, and the prerequisites and the combat mastery as well. It's way too many skill points. You need like 130 something skill points to complete this character. Which you just cannot get. So that's a big problem. I was removed like one of the synergies. And just... Yeah, I don't know, like, Blizzard fix it please, you can't complete this build. Then we go ahead through Act 2, where we go and get ourselves into Talrush's Tomb, and it goes less than perfect. At this point we are still using our strength and our steel. And we are doing a lot of save and exiting, because it's just the fastest way to get through this, and we just can't kill this, we just do not have the damage. So, save and exit again... Attempt number three through the temple or the tomb. And just look at this kill speed. This is just sad. So after an hour in the, in the tomb, we get to Duriel. And yeah, I gotta be honest. This character is actually a pretty decent boss killer because of the crushing blow. Like this is not bad at all. We are surviving this. We're not dealing a lot of damage, but we are just doing it, you know. But just getting through the tomb took like an hour. It's insane.
yeah, just slowly whittling down Duriel. And that was a Duriel fight. After that, I decided I needed to get some more gear. So we get a new belt. We find a sword. We find a soul flate. Then increased IAS, leech, resist, bit of damage. And then we do some more bail running on normal and we find ourselves a sham shield, which is the sword hexfire. Oh, and we also find a sustenance charm. So we find hexfire, which actually does a lot of damage. It's a pretty good sword. And we then upgrade our soul flate to a Dacian fog and reset our stat and skill points so we can actually use them. So this is my stats right now. We're pretty low on HP, but the rest of it all seems fine. Like this should get us through nightmare. But yeah, you, you just have so many skills that you want. You have, look, you need so much. And yeah, these are our resists right now. And we can do some more bail running. Where we find the best run that we could, of the best item that we could in Goblin Toast. These are light plated boots. These are insane. They have 25% crushing blow. And after the finding of the Goblin Toast, this character really picks up. So we do some Pindle as well for the final bit of experience before the level up. We find the Nook is on Relic. And now we have 95% fire resistance. Which is totally not ominously added in at all. So we move along to Act Three, where we uh, where we find ourselves a Soul Harvest after after killing Storm Tree, and then we go to Mephisto, where we get a Combat Shrine, which makes this a very nice fight. Yeah, I just wanted to show a few of the fights unedited and just show how this goes. Once you hit with a crushing blow, the fight actually goes pretty damn fast. But when you're not hitting with a crushing blow, oof boy, oof boy. It's not a good look. And of course we switch back to our MF equipment for the final kill on Mephisto. It is Mephisto after all. We upgrade the Soul Harvest to a battle side so our mercenary is a better weapon. And then we move along to Hephaestus the Armorer where we can go ahead and get ourselves some runes. And we get very lucky here. We get a Fal rune. And we can use a... F oh yeah, we also try and farm some Mephisto which goes just swimmingly. As you can see by the save and exiting, we do farm some more Mephisto where we find the heavy gloves. Which are sanders, which we can use for some IAS and some uh, life. And then we go to Diablo where we have another fight that's just... This is actually just super reasonable. Like, look at this. The crushing blow triggering is just good. I mean, I'm honestly not sad about this fight at all. This is super reasonable. I mean, if the character does like this for the rest of the run, I'm gonna be very happy. Then in Act 5, we find an Executioner Sword, and you're like, why are you showing this? Because we can get 6 sockets in it, so we add the sockets to it. And we end up with a 6 socket Executioner Sword with... Yeah, the requirements of this are insane, like 170 strength who came up with this, but the Unbending Will rune would lowers that quite a bit. And this is a new rune word in patch 2.4 or 2.5. I don't know where we're at right now. So we go ahead and equip that sword because it's, it seems very good. We actually got a pretty low roll on it, by the way. Like it rolls 300 to 350 IA, uh, damage and 20 to 30 IAS. We, we ended up pretty low, but still, it's a massive upgrade of what we had. And then we go ahead and head to the Ancients on Nightmare, which obviously are fast forwarded because this takes forever. Even with the new sword, we are just not dealing the damage we want. <laughs> I, mean, I am honestly struggling, like how do I get enough damage on a melee character untwinked to make this reasonable, like this damage is just eee. If anyone has any tips on how to get more damage on a melee character than what I'm doing, please let me know. Like I'm getting crushing blow, open wounds, I'm trying for some leech. If anyone has any tips on getting more damage, absolutely tell me. 
There's like another weapon setup that I don't know about. Just let me know, you know. So yeah, as we are slowly but surely beating on Korlik. And we go after Talik. I, I went after Talik first because or after Korlik first because Talik is fire enchanted and the conviction aura will make that very dangerous. Because if he explodes, he deals a lot of fire enchanted, deal a lot of damage. But we have 95 fire resist, remember, because of the Nocus on Relic. So this should be fine, right? Wrong. I still die. This felt so cheap. So yeah, that's the uh, first attempt at the Blizzard way of a Frenzy Bob. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome. This is Nuclear Rebel, and today I'm going to be playing a Berserker. And as you can tell, I'm uh, yeah having a hard time beating Rock and Issue. Anyway, in normal, I just start off by using Howler Point because Howler is a level one skill, but it's really good. And yeah, we're just using two scepters to beat the counters because, as usual, we're a barbarian. We're gonna need a lot, a lot, a lot of runes. So we need a tall ad for stealth. We need a, a bunch of tell runes if we can get them. Oh, I find a buckler as well. It's a belt of Lunata. That's a good find. But the 10 vitality is just 40 life on the shield. Like, nothing's gonna ever beat that. I also find a big bonnet over there. And I decide to give it to my mercenary who's, who was wearing a Frost Nova helmet, by the way. Because Frost Nova is really good. Like, the chance to proc Frost Nova in the early game is so powerful. But with that in mind, we go ahead and move along. And I found one of the most important items of the entire run. I end up finding a Death Sash. And this has one mod called Cannot Be Frozen. And it's just a mod that should be on way more eyes. Like, Cannot Be Frozen is so unbelievably rare. But yeah, so uh, Captain Find It All over here is just uh, beating down on Ontario. I mean, I named him Boo Hank, which is Dutch for farm dude, basically. Because I knew that it's a barbarian and we're gonna have to farm a lot. I also find the Saurus boost, by the way. Like, this is insane. And yeah, uh, all the farming. I should have called him Captain Spoonfat. Because, man, did this guy find some items. Holy crap. But yeah, the basic idea here is uh, we're just going to pick up our groceries in Act 2 and we are berserking or beating down with a staff and now we find some golf wood as well. We don't even need them, like, what the hell? Anyway, the basic idea is to use a uh, berserk with howl and just find a really powerful weapon and just beat everything to death with magic damage. And yeah, this is just basically how this fight, like I don't even have Berserk yet, but this is Concentrate, which is just uh, the pre-version of it. So yeah, Durio going down easily, which is very tanky. And I find some heavy boots, we, which are insane. Look at these! Double rest and faster run and math. I also find a superior pike with three open sockets, like what the hell? This barbarian found more good items than some of my hell runs, like in Act 3 normal. Also, I bravely look on as my mercenary deals with those dolls. And yeah, just beating down the council. Not the great. So what I do here is just kind of pull them apart. Start beating them down. And I decided to add the council to this video because people have been requesting longer videos. I was like, okay, 10, 12, 15 minutes should be fine. But I've got a bunch of comments asking for longer. So I decided to include the council and some other fights as well. Hope you all enjoy it. Also, we hawk some stuff. This is uh, this build. Basically, if you want to Google this, this is just a Pitzerker without teleport. That's, that's just what I'm building here. I'll show the builds off and stuff later in the video as well. Anyway, here's Mephisto, that's Mephisto, and now we find Ishwal. And as you can tell, Howl just doing an excellent job of keeping us safe here. Like, we would be beating down way less hard, because everything will be backstabbing us on top of Howl. Like, yeah, fuck them, get out of here. Howl is really good. Like, I would put Howl, if I, if I did my own mod of the game, because people have been doing that recently. If I was doing my own mod of the game, I would move Howl up with like level 12 or something. It's that powerful. It's so good. Anyway, this is our drops for the Hellforge on normal. 
And this is just me fighting effect. And as you can tell, it's just the same thing. Howl clears the board, kills the dude, and moving along. Is the Diablo fight always just a very hard fight? But we have 631 HP, which is really bonkers, actually. And the Merc is staying alive as well, like he's keeping up. But yeah, Battle Orders is a uh, synergy for Berserk, so I'm just maxing out Battle Orders as hard as I can. And yeah, this is also just the Belta Lunata, like it adds 40 life, that's so much. Bye Mercenary. Hi Mercenary. Hi Diablo. Mm, bye Diablo. Best drop ever, by the way. Okay, so I end up crafting some gloves, and yeah, those are insane. Life lead to fire resist and 10% crushing blow. I'll take it. Here are the ancients, and at this point, I actually have Berserk. I, I found some random bike that deals a ton of damage. At this point in the game, when you're a barbarian, like, scepters don't really work anymore. You're kind of just praying for a good weapon. And I, throughout the run, you'll see me use, like, random stuff for a while, like until the end of uh, normal at least you'll see me use just random stuff. Although the end of normal not that far away, I mean I'm basically beating down the minions of destruction as we speak, so... Yeah, I, I end up getting very lucky and finding two uh, very good weapons, but that's later, that's later. I mean, yeah, this cap this uh, character should have been called Captain Spoonfat, like I'm serious. It got to the point where I was like, man, this doesn't even feel like a solo self-found character anymore. It's so insane. Anyway, Bale, as usual, just fast-forwarding really hard because he has a ton of HP. And there he goes. So I end up finding a 4-socket partisan in the counters. And we all know what that means. I also find some stuff. So time for a respec into the partisan and the pole arm. And this is fast forward because this is how long that pole arm lasts. I mean, this is the actual same game as me respecking. And you can also just see some general gameplay like this, which is pretty cool. I should add more of that. I like that. And we find a bone snap. So back to the respec. I'm not kidding. I respec twice in like four minutes. So I put a hell rune in that because I, w I figured that this would be my final weapon for the game. And I would end up making it an ogre maul. And an Ogre Maul needs 225 strength, but with a Hellrune it needs 185 strength, which saves you 40. And 40 uh, strength saved, uh, I also make it a War Club now, which is insane damage. Anyway, 40 strength saved makes it so that you get 40 vitality more, 40, that's 160 life before bow. It, it basically ends up adding like 350 to 400-ish life, depending on your bow level. So I find the Splint Mail, which is a Berserker armor. It's just nice. It's a plus one skill armor. It's nice. I use a Lore as well, as usual. And I end up making a Myth, a Hell on Nef. So plus two skills. Nothing that special for the rest. And I end up making a Gem Gothic Plate with 72 MF for some farming. Because we're going to do a lot of that. Find a Soul Rune. And this is just nice to see, you know. I, I never hit. I have to. I also find a go rune in nightmare counters, and I find a cask as well. So that's a steel skull, which is actually not that great for this build. The berserk doesn't work with life leeches, so you have, I basically find a 10 IAS 38 MF helm, which is still really good. But I actually end up taking the lore and giving my mercenary the steel skull until I go farming. Then things are different. So that's Andario, and this is basically how I walk through the game, like howl, 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 and an egg boss that I can't skip. I, I had a pretty fast playthrough with this, like I did a ton of farming, I did like 10-12 hours of farming, which is more than some of the caster playthroughs I've did, but it's a melee build, you're gonna farm, like that's, that's just, that's, you're not not farming with a melee build in this game, it's not happening. But. You can just hold everything away and walk along. So yeah, this is me fighting the Travancore uh, Council on Nightmare, and it's fine. Like, look at the damage. What? I don't hit a lot because my attack rating is really bad. I would totally change attack rating, by the way, if I was in command of the game. But when I hit, I hit really hard. Like, I mean, whiff, 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 kill, whiff, kill, 
Whiff, 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 kill. It's so nice, just kill. I mean, seriously, I ended up uh, in the end going into tax with this build, even though the barbarian doesn't need it for the mall. But my my uh, attack rating was just uh, that bad. I also end up uh, upgrading my dad's card, so now I have four slots in my belt, which is really nice. And you can just see when I hit my fist, I'm like whiff, 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 clats. And whiff, 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 bam. Whiff, 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 bam. Like, it, you're just chunking like one, two letters at a time. It's insane. Also insane drop. I end up crafting a ring as well. So basically this is a 114 AR, 2 strength and 13 life. Like the life leech and mana leech does not work for Berserk. And yeah, just hauling stuff away while I beat down on Israel. Yeah, Howl is so good. Like, I, I'm always... I, I've used a bunch of characters with Howl before, but Howl impresses me just every single time. I find a ballroom out of the Hellforge, which is great, because now I don't have to farm for one from the counters on Hell. I, I Otherwise, I would have to farm for a ballroom in uh, Hell. So I'm very happy with that Hellforge drop. Basically, I always want to find Paul or Lamb. Like, Lamb runes? I could find like five Lamb runes in a run and I'd still be very happy. You never have enough Lamb runes. This is the Amulet Diablo drop. It's seven resist all with some lightning resist. I end up making a new MF helm as well. And then we go back to the farming. So here's Trash Shocket. Who drops a Swirling Crystal. Which is an Oculus. So yeah, that's one of the best sorcerer's weapons in the game. So I can't wait to find an Ariads when I'm playing a Sorceress. And here are the Ancients. Just look at that. Chonk, chonk, chonk. It's so fun. This build also, even though you're going down to zero defense, this build is way safer than you'd think. Like, this is very good. Also, it's the best mf -er in the game. So if you want an MF character and you're done with Sorceress, because Sorceress farm a fist and stuff really bad. If you want to run a Grail, play a Pit Circer. If you want to do it on only one character, I mean, like, you can use your whole account, I did. There's no way I'm doing on the grill on one character, fuck that. Oh, here's Bale. And as you can tell, attack rating is really bad, like, whiff, 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 but when I hit, it's so good. But yeah, there's just a big step between Nightmare and Hell, and with almost every single melee that you're gonna have to farm. So after this Bale fight, there's gonna be a lot of like, I did like 12 hours of farming after Bale Nightmare before I really went into Hell. Like I did some pit runs, I did some counter runs, I did a lot of counts. I literally three and a half, four hours of counts because I needed one rune and it just would not drop. And uh, what else? I found more Bale. Like I, I hung out in Nightmare, but I. Mo I started off with Mephisto Nightmare because Mephisto Nightmare is just a pretty easy kill and he can drop quite a cool, some cool stuff. So I found a Battle Sword, which is a head strike. And at this point, I was like, ah, maybe I want to use this over the Bone Snap. And I was like, eh, I don't know. Bone Snap's really cool. But then I found another bo Bone Snap, so an Ethereal Bone Snap, which is really cool. Like, I, w I would have loved to use it for a while. But I end up just hitting the absolute character, like Captain Spoonfat at it again. So I end up finding a cleaver and I am respected for this cleaver. Butcher's Pupil is like a mini grief. This weapon is so good. Just IAS, adds damage, deadly strike, open with the... If you're playing a melee character and you find a Butcher's Pupil, use it. It's, it's just that good. So here's my build. As you can tell, pretty standard Berserker stuff. And the Butcher's Purple also gives me uh, the slot to use a shield, so now I don't need to use my belt anymore, so I can use a better belt and I can use a shield at a rhyme for, uh, what you might call it, for cannot be frozen. And so with that I head to the counter to drop something. 
and I kill her some more. So I found an Ist rune and then I found a Lem rune. Now I can make Lem Ist Eo, but I will never in a million years make that rune work because turning into a doll is so bad. So I end up making a treachery. And now I just have Fade, and at this point the game feels like, eh, whatever, but I, I want a Lum rune so I can upgrade my weapon. So after three and a half hours of farm encounters, here we go. A small Kreskin, which is pretty cool, and yeah, this weapon is wow. Like, nothing is stopping this. It hits really fast, it has open wounds, because it requires a bunch of attacks. I'm actually hitting stuff now as well, which is great. look at me chunking and at this point I'm just holding and walking towards the end of the game so also I almost have 3k HP yeah just look at him go like I'm faded I have a bunch of damage reduction I'm berserking I have a ton of damage my attack rating is good and I also find a black horns face because I wasn't like captain spoon fed enough so black horns face is an insane helm it's Lightning Absorb is just any Absorb, but especially Lightning is so important if you can get it, because souls exist. And yeah, that's just the whole reason. And it also has slow, so it stops act bosses and stuff. And you can just tell things are running around slow, which makes it easier to hit them. And easier to hit means more kills, means more loot. I love that yeah, helmet so much, it's so good. Anyway, that's the console. As you can tell, this character is just built to farm at this point. And here, look at this, it's Mephisto, and I'm just... Yeah, just standing there, I don't care anymore. Like, I have max resist, I have damage reduction. Nothing is stopping this character. Yeah, I walk into the plains of despair, only to be immediately greeted by Israel. And just look at how fast I'm kick killing him, it's great. Like, look at that, dude. just I. This is well, I know this is fast forward, but even then, this is still really fast. I just have so much damage at this point. And Captain Spoonfed is still not done. I find another Lemurin, and I just don't even need it anymore. We're ringing Diablo's doorbells and his butlers opened the door. Also that Colossus Forge is ethereal and I ended up making a merc mercenary weapon out of it. And yeah, just howl and kill the main thing. Like, this is just a pit zerker. I don't have teleport, but for the rest this is just a pit zerker. I ran a bunch of pits with him as well for uh, level, so I have some better attack rating and stuff, but... I found nothing. I did like... 3-4 hours of pits and I dropped actual nothing. So yeah, that's the Diablo on hell and yeah, just look at this, just beating him down very easily. And I find laying of hands as well, because if you thought Captain Spoonfed was done, he wasn't. So now I have laying of hands as well, which is 350% enhanced damage to demons and IAS, and just look at him go. I mean, I know these aren't demons, but who cares at this point? Like, I'm 3 on one the ages, I'm just standing there and kicking their ass. Yeah, this is not the safest build. I, I, like, if you want to go 100% safe, don't play this, but it's really good. Like, and look at me just chunking those minions, like, oh man, makes me all hot and bother. Yeah, just look at him go, like, that's some serious chunk that he has. Lister, who cares? Bam, here you go, eat the axe. And here is Bail on Hell, and at this point you already realize I'm gonna get there. Well, let's just look at the fight and... Yeah, the main thing is if you wanna play like this, you, you're gonna have to farm for a weapon, there's no denying it, you need a weapon. It, I mean, I hit the absolute jackpot in a British pure pill, but you can absolutely use like a head striker. A, a Gintus Rift could do it. 
And maybe you get really lucky and find like a lightsaber or something. That's also a really sweet weapon. But then you're really talking high and you need like if you want to use a mid level you need, you can just use. Let's see. Yeah, which is purple is the best one for sure. But head striker will do it. You can also. You can also just use a 6 rocket chill, uh, crystal sword and like a ton of crushing blow, that would also work. That's right, also this is my equipment, so... As you can tell, this, this equipment is insane, like the ring's okay, but the rest of this is all very, very good. You can improve this character as well, a lot as you can tell, like this is definitely not a final build or anything, but for a solo cell phone run this was insane. Like the drops never stopped. There you go, that's the build. And this is the Mustang, yeah, that's the Colossus Forge that I talked about. I end up making an LM fall for Mustang and that's the Steel Squad that found so we have another Guardian to the roster. And thank you for watching, see you in the next one. Today I am killing the counters by throwing big sticks in her face. With my almost naked man. Just big brown sticks. I find a maze mastery helm, so I'm very glad this isn't a maze run. I only do maze runs every single other time, so of course I find the plus three helm this time. I find Hasaru's belt of Antario, which is really nice. And in Tarrasha's tomb, we just run around a bit and uh, have our first save and quit in Act 2 normal. Oh man, this is gonna be a rough one. So yeah, our throw barbarian, because that's what I'm doing, is hitting Duriel with sticks. And you can actually see him piercing a bit. That's because the throw mastery now has a boost where it gives pierce and stuff. But yeah, while Duriel uses our mercenary like a bowling pin, we go ahead and run around a bunch. And throw some more sticks at him. And then we go to the Flayer jungle where we find the best light gauntlets I have ever seen on a character ever. So these are quad res gloves and yeah I'm, I'm guessing like 20 bursts 30 bursts at least almost drops the heat as well I mean look at that that ring is insane what the hell how do you get that at level 13 in act 3 that that, that ring is like GG like, I would wear that on like level 80 characters no problem after that we go and stick some large brown sticks in the council's face and the other half of the council we find a Saigon's helm after that we go to Mephisto where we do a lot of dodging, a lot of running away. I mean our damage is super reasonable. I tried this build on Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction and it was pretty damn miserable. But it's it's super reasonable now. Like not This isn't, don't get me wrong, this isn't like a hammered in or anything. But it's pretty damn reasonable. And then we have my favorite spawn of the Chaos Sanctuary. I hate this map so much because it makes me do this every single time. Before I can go on and kill them. And after that we have the Diablo fight. So we go and do some dodging. We dodge to the left. We dodge to the right. Lots of fire flying everywhere. The first sliver of his HP is gone. Run around. Try and hit him. We dodge the lightning. We dodge him. We try to get him in a good position. Yeah, the auto aim is actually pretty bad. Like you won't have this problem on PC. But on the auto aim on console just starts missing him after a while. It's really weird. But the good thing is we have 350 HP. So we can kind of walk in his hits a bit. Like don't tank the lightning. You will die. Yeah key to this fight really just a reasonable distance. Dodging the attacks and hitting him. And making sure you don't die. But that's pretty much a given. I mean you can die in a hardcore run. I would know. But yeah, it doesn't help with the whole clearing the run and anyway, we get to the end of diablo almost almost dead a few more attacks the final dodges it's the final dodges to do to oh god my singing is so bad anyway after that we had to act five where our problem with the weapon starts uh, really appearing so i haven't shown myself finding a single weapon that's for a reason i haven't and in act five you can really start to tell that it's not great also don't do this i was like ah moon lords and an evil urn, what can go wrong? So I pressed the urn and then did it fucking again. So my mercenary dies and I run away for my life. I mean, I'm running for my, for my life right now and 
from a guy named Snarl. Ancients, we go and separate Madog. Pretty easy kill. Then the Whirlwindy guy comes and shows up. Alec. My mercenary can keep calling busy, so I'll fight Madog and then decide that I'm losing, so I'm gonna split them up anyway. So I go and play a quick game of inventory Tetris. Question happens after a while of stick swinging. And there's the final one. Just throwing my big blown sticks at his tentacles. Very interesting fights in that way. Last about 30 seconds, very familiar feeling. And I find a unique partisan. And with that, I am immediately switching because that is a Pierre Tombal Courant, a partisan, three barbarian skills, FHR damage. And with that in my mind, I've switched to a whirlwind barbarian. I've been wanting to do a whirlwind barbarian for a while now, but I need a weapon to do it. So basically on every bar, I was like, if I find a good two-hander, I'm doing a whirlwind bar. And I did. So thank God because I was uh, not finding the items for the straw barbarian. So thanks to the comments, I started farming the Cow King for the first time and with a Troll Barbarian and it took a while but I did end up just having a bunch of good rounds. It was pretty damn great actually. The Troll Barbarian really not disappointing, even though I'm not wearing any reasonable weapons at all. Very solid rounds. This is players 3 by the way. But I end up finding everything I ever wanted in those set leather gloves over there which are Dad's gloves and then we find the Dad's sash as well from the Cow King. So that's the set sash. So thank you commenters for pointing it out. So this gives me 30 IAS, cannot be frozen, life lead to resistances, which is just amazing. And after that I'm like, eh, I can go to Nightmare, what can go wrong? Well, not doing damage, having barely any resists and yeah, it's a... Uh, not my greatest decision ever. But after that I decide to respec at Akara for some world winning, which also goes great as you can tell I almost immediately die. And apparently just slamming them a bunch is better at this point. I decide to craft and end up with this necklace, the Dread Necklace the Amulet. Which is just a massive fire resist and mana leech amulet which is fantastic, just such a good craft. I also find a Saigon's armor so now I get a ton of attack rating and 10 more life leech. And with that I do go into Nightmare. I end up making an inside as well for my mercenary. Find a Moses in the maggot lair. Completely useless but I thought I'd point out. I love Moses. It's such a cool item. I don't know why but I love this thing to death. Durial Nightmare time. Wee. So yeah the part is on just doing work. Just cutting through Durial. And I know this isn't like static, static, static or spamming a bunch of hammers. For a melee character this is very good. And then in the Flayer jungle I end up finding a combat skiller. Nice. Perfect. And after that, our Swiss knife just goes through the console. I find a Berserker's Axe, but I'm not gonna use it, obviously. I would like a run with where I find all three of the Berserker pieces. Like, none of them are rare. You should be able to find them pretty easily, actually. So we will went into Mephisto. And what you can see me doing here is making very short whirls and just aiming towards the side of him a bit. It's, it's very hard on controller. The auto aim just decides. But on the mouse you need to go like to the edges of him and just edge him a bit. End up finding an Amrun and a mask. And a Korun from the Hellforge. Go chop and cut the Lord the size as well. And they drop me a sharp Koran charm with some damage and some AR. I, I love finding sharp ground charms. They're just like I found three fine charms. It's great. And the Diablo fight very different from normal. Quickly put on my MF gear and kill him. For the greatest drops ever. So anyway, Nightmare Ancient's time also very easy. Like, like when you have a unique partisan, Nightmare is just pretty damn easy. I lost the bail footage, so yeah, that's why that's there. This is me going into hell, should be fine. And I guess I'm wrong because I just... Uh, Almost died to corpse fire, which is not a good sign. So I decided to go back to the safety of Nightmare. But things just go poof. And go do some more Mephisto runs. And I find a unique Yari. And this is one of the only weapons in the game where, where I will switch out my Pierre Tombal. Because this is a Hon Sundan and Hon Sundan is insane. And I totally didn't forget natural resistances at all, ever. I wouldn't ever. 
find a cold killer in the Mephisto nightmare area. And then I kill Mephisto some more. And the unique Yari just has a ton of crushing blows. So Mephisto dies like he's a pack of leaves. And I'm finding a death mask. Making a myth for the plus two barbarian skills. And with that I should be just good to go into hell. I hate how the zombies are the first thing you find in hell. Because they make your characters all look bad. But yeah this is cursed fanaticism. I'm not about that life. And zombies are just very hard to kill. So every character is like ah I'm doing so bad in hell. Because the zombies won't die. But... Yeah, you'll, you'll be able to kill the rats. Zombies are like the actual hardest thing ever to kill. Just like you have quill rats in the blood more. And it's like quill rats are one of the most dangerous enemies in the game. And nobody suspects it. It's like the Spanish Inquisition like that. So we bitch Storm Crow to Force of Will. And then go after the smith. To make sure that I can tank Andario better. And this is pretty hard on console with a whirlwind bomb. Like, I just want to make a three corner turn around Andario. But instead the auto target keeps getting me into the, the afflicted and stuff. So it's kind of weird on console. Like whirlwind definitely doesn't play as well on console as it does on PC. It's still very viable as you can tell. But... Definitely not as good. Then we safely get through the maggot lair. But yeah, this is just a thing with having 2400 HP. You just don't care about the game anymore. You can just walk in and be like, I need to go that way and then go that way. And With that Thurio goes down, we go towards a very nice forest walk. Past all the gloams. After that we go back because I needed more attack rating so I end up putting a perfect diamond. And Mephisto goes down. Doesn't drop anything useful, but it doesn't matter at this point anymore. I'm just walking towards the end. So the thing with Diablo 2 is like once you hit 2500 HP, you just don't really have to care about the game anymore. I had be I did a tier list recently and people were telling me that World well, needed to be low because Battles take a while though, you're definitely not killing things very fast or anything, but very solid build overall. You can tell the Chaos Sanctuary is just taking a while. A lot of positioning, lots of luring stuff. And take things one at a time. Just lure out one Doom Knight and then at the end go for Lord the Size. And when, once you're one on one with a monster, just poke them. Especially when they're Stone Skin, just use Berserk to poke them a bunch. It deals magic damage so it ignores Stone Skin. And after taking down every single monster one by one, we get to Diablo, which is just basically the same fight as in Nightmare. Yeah, 40% crushing blow is just so sick. I mean, look at this, it's so fast for a melee character. There's always the disclaimer, whenever I say things like it's so fast, always the disclaimer for a melee character. And with Diablo being killed, there's only one thing left, to make it through Act 5, but god damn does this game not want me to. So first off, Might Packs in Crystal and Passage. Figured, okay, I'll run the other way, where I find fanaticism. So I run back. And away. Because I'm not getting through that. Second attempt in the glacial trail. Fanaticism. Almost lose a one-on-one -on -one with the moon lord. Moon lords are so insane. Like, you can almost lose a one-on-one -on -one with them with a melee character. It's so bonkers. Then, for the ancient fight, here we go. Not try and separate them. But they keep coming in in threes. So I decide to just go for it, fill up on pot necessary. So now it's just Kolik and Talik. Which I can easily take. Also, Barbarian must be in excellent shape because I cannot do that many reps of a lunge. Like, not happening. Especially not at that speed. And with one lag. But in the end, they go down. So I go to the World Stone. Level 1, no problem. Level 2. 
as usual, fucking souls. So I decided to just well, go the other way, what could possibly go wrong? Well that, Jesus Christ, I almost died. So attempt number two, try and get through. There's lots more souls. And after the souls, there's might souls and stuff. So yeah, what could, what else could happen? Well, we could have dolls. So here we go again from the start because I'm not going through dolls and dead lords at the same time with this character. It's not happening. But luckily, the game is like, ah, eh, you'll be able to pass. This is fine, right? Like this is fine. Like nothing going on here. No monsters or anything. Just full screens of death. Achmel the Curse was like, nah man, you ain't getting there. I mean, the game really tried to stop me, but we do end up just killing Bale. And he drops us some Mage Fist. This is my gear. Most of it's pretty damn good, actually, for a change. And on the Switch, I have plus two Barbarian skills and a Saigon Shield for plus three to battle orders when I switch. Combat skill is really nice on the charms. These are my stats. I'm level 74. These are my scales and thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye. Hello and welcome. This is the Nuclear Rabbit and today I am playing a Frenzy Barbarian. We start off by farming the counters for a Tal and an Eth rune and almost dying to some ghosts. And here you can already tell this is gonna be a quick run. Anyway, with our stealth and two scepters in hand, we go towards Andario. So the weapons I'm using here are just two scepters I bought from Makara. There's nothing special about them. They just deal more damage than anything else you can find right now. Andario drops us Hasaru's boot, which is amazing. And then we go ahead and make ourselves a steel. That's the stealth I mentioned. And I'm going for a triple tall flail. And what happens now is that I deal a lot of poison damage. And I'm actually able to kill stuff, which is great. So after that, we go towards Duria, where you can really see the poison ticking down. And as you can tell, this fight's going pretty okay. Alazir is tanking him nicely, and we are just bashing down with the poison damage. And we are towards Act 3, where we almost get burned alive. Or unalive, mostly. I, I think burned alive is such a weird thing we also find ourselves bell by the way which is insane we now get a ton of attack rating it's i believe it's 10 attack rating per level which is just brilliant you're gonna use that far into hell which brings us to the console but anyway what i was saying was i think burning alive is such a weird way of saying this because you're making things unalive but yeah normal console doing fine the triple tail just gives you 225 poison damage and that's just enough to get you through normal and a big part of Nightmare if you really want to. So we go and head towards Mephisto who does kill Alhazir. No! But you can still see just the poison damage ticking down on him. And he goes down as well, nothing interesting and drops there. And then we head towards the Chaos Sanctuary where we fight Diablo. I mean the game's named after him, let's fight the guy. A mercenary just immediately dead and... And we are just lucky that we have 670 HP because we need it here. And the way to kill him is just the same way as Mephisto Duriel. Take him with some poison. Wait till it takes down. Is it good? No. Is it effective? Barely. Does it work? Yeah. I mean, he will go down eventually. And one thing you can see is the open wounds. Like the puddle of blood on the floor is the open wounds uh, trigger. And that also deals some damage. So there's open wounds going and there's poison damage going. Which kind of makes this reasonably paced-ish. And yeah, as usual, dodge the lightning. Don't be Metallica, don't ride the lightning. And as long as Diablo isn't his usual color, something is dealing damage to him. So just keep it going. But once he turns red, just poke him again. And with a final poke, he goes down after a few seconds of poison. And with that, we head towards Eldritch, because Eldritch is a very good place to farm for some experience. We find the Saigon's armor as well here, which is nice. And after some farming, we go towards the Ancients, who we also just poke down with poison and open wounds. The good weapons really happen... Well, actually post-game, but the better weapons happen in Nightmare Hell-ish. But yeah, honestly, the real good weapons happen after thousands of hours of farming with this character. But yeah, we're going 3 on 1 with Asians. And tanking it. Poison ticking down on Korlik. Korlik goes away. We get a close call here, only 200 HP left. So run away a bit. Give the potion some time. A one trick if Talik whirlwinds you, and this goes for every whirlwind in the game. So if you're PvPing or something as well. 
uh, walk instead of run, you still keep your block and your defense. So what happens is you just take a lot less hits. So standing still and taking the whirlwind and taking it like a man is defensively a lot more viable than trying to run away through it. And Talek goes down as well. And now it's just a one on one versus Madog, who goes down very easily. After that comes Bale, who as usual takes forever, but we do have some crushing blow at this point, so. And that's it for normal, so we head towards a nightmare where we go and farm the council some more. Find another Am rune and another Am rune. So after farming the runes we need, we go towards Andariel Nightmare, who poisons our mercenary. I still think it's weird that Andariel is the only act boss that gets a different color on a different difficulty. I don't know why that is. I mean, I don't hate it, I actually kind of like it, but it's so weird. So with the power of open wounds, crushing blow and poison combined, Andariel goes down and gets us nothing. Absolutely nothing. So we head towards Act 2, where we find an IO rune, which is an excellent find. Because I didn't find one at the counters. But the rune which you want to make is the Thal IO Nav, which is black. And that gives you crushing blow, so that makes it very easy to go towards Duriel. And at this point, one thing you'll notice we're in Nightmare Act 2. And I have 1200 HP. I have more HP than most of my guardians have at this point. Barbarians and, well, druids as well, have just stupid amounts of HP. So one thing a lot of hardcore players do is just pump everything into vitality, which works. But one thing you can do is just put points in dexterity, get more attack rating, actually kill things. I mean, you don't really need 1200 HP to beat Turial Nightmare. Like, that's way overkill so i usually aim for about like 2500 hp and after that i'm just like okay get my attack rating going get my strength going i need damage and that's mostly for players one by the way if you go on a higher players count you might need 3000 but after 3000 you really don't need it oh wait durial changes color as well okay the more you learn and after durial as usual comes the council Oh, for those wondering, I'm wearing a green armor now instead of Sirens. It's a hawk mill. It has cannot be frozen and basically nothing else. But yeah, you can really tell how much battle orders helps you survive because we're just tanking the council. Our mercenary is still alive as well. Although the well is helping for that. Oh, well. But yeah, efficient well usage is something that's very important in situations like this. Like, mercenary just tanked the council. Because if you don't drain the well completely, they regenerate very fast. Don't know how fast exactly, but you can definitely get like 3 or 4 uses out of them. Also, this is knockback in action. Which is actually kind of nice. A lot of people don't like knockback on their frenzy barbarians, but I do kind of like it. Because you don't have a lot of crowd control. So it gives you a bit of that. I know you get battle cry and stuff, but this gets something away from you as well. And if you manage to surround them, you also get to, uh, whatchamacallit knock them back and just stun knock them, which is great. Which is why I think clay gloss gloves are one of the best gloves in the game for this build. For Soto self found at least, like you can craft way better, but you should be able to get clay gloss pretty consistently. And then in the Durance of Hate, things are always very fun, so my mercenary is dealing with a bunch of might dolls while I am waiting. They're also cursed by the way, because they weren't miserable enough. I mean, life is like a box of chocolates, like they say in Forrest Gump. The one day you're gonna get chocolate, the other day you get cursed my dolls. Also, they were camping me when I went to town, it's so mean. And after that is Mephisto, well we have 1400 HP and crushing blow, we're gonna kill Mephisto pretty damn quick here. Although he does deal a lot of damage to us as well. So who goes down first, the mercenary or Mephisto? Who is it gonna be, who is it gonna be? It's the mercenary of course. And then Mephisto goes down and he drops us Sargon's boots, which is an, an addition to the armor if we want it. After that we start farming Mephisto for some gear. I need lots of gear. So I end up finding a war spear for the mercenary, which will carry him pretty damn far into the game. So prevent monster heal and ignore target defense is really nice. After that he drops me a Lum rune, and with that I decide to go to watch the Hellforce, see if I can get something to combine with my Lum, and I find a Shale rune, so I have Shale Lum, which is not really a thing. So I go back to Mephisto, 
It drops for me the third piece of Saigons. And with that, I decide to go towards Diablo. But one thing that I noticed is that I really need the attack rating. So I ended up going back to Hazaras anyway. And even then, you can still see me swinging and missing. Man, the Bob with the Hogmail looks like he's wearing spandex on the road. Nice, sexy, bald man spandex. Also, Diablo goes down, drops us nothing. Then we lose a one on one with a Frenzy Barbarian, I mean a Fnatic Moonlord. We also lose a one on one with a Champion Moonlord. We're doing one on one with enemies and we're chugging pods, so that's um, not a good sign. We do a save and quit and then we run into this and I'm like fuck no that I'm doing that so I leave again. The third time's the charm though so we make it to the Ancients in Nightmare again. Same strategy, split them up. Okay so we get Madoc first. So one thing you can do to make sure that the Ancients don't whirlwind you is to go stand in a corner and they'll just never do it because they're scared of falling off the cliff. Because they don't know there's an invisible wall there. We do, but they don't. Oh, the axes that I'm using, because I switched away from the flails at this point, except for the crushing blow against bosses. The axes that I'm using are two gold kills that I found off Mephisto Nightmare. And finally, the ancients go down. So we go level up and head towards Bale. And I end up finding a hell rune, so I'm making a lion heart. And I'm using it to kill Nightmare Bale. And after that, I get a terrorized Durance of Hate, which is like a golden ticket towards items. So I end up finding a unique Tusk Sword and a unique Battle Sword, which are respectively a Head Striker, which is a very, very good weapon, and a Vile Husk, both of which I put sockets in. But with those two weapons, I head towards Andariel in Hell. And you can really start to see the problem of this build. I'm not dealing a lot of damage. Subtly sad. And don't get me wrong, the Head Striker is one of the best unique weapons in the game for this, but still, it's just not a lot of damage. One thing that does happen though with the Vile Husk is that it triggers amp damage, which makes it doable to get through stuff at least. But here you can really just see me struggling. So I kind of regret putting the socket into the file task because I need another weapon anyway. So this ain't gonna cut it. The only way I do enough damage to even kill stuff is with the amp damage. And this is how you get through physical immune with a frenzy barbarian. You deal a little bit of cold damage and a little bit of lightning damage and you take a lot of patience. I'm just not even keeping up with the random stuff. And this is me trying to get through another door. And this should just not be this hard. I mean, Sir Flame Killer here is just blocking me completely. Also, how do those things get through that little door? How does that work? But yeah, I end up just having to kill them one by one by one by one. Which is really just the epitome of this character. You're gonna do one enemy at a time. Also you slurp a lot a lot of pots. And if you thought the maggot lair was bad with this character, welcome to the arcane sanctuary. Where dreams go to die. So unless I trigger amplified damage, I'm just not killing anything here. As you can tell. Hey I'm damaged. But we do end up making it through. The Durial fight wasn't very interesting. I walked up to Durial with 2600 HP and I punched him in the face a bunch. It was... yeah. So here we have some thorn hooks. With Might, who are just kind of kicking my ass. So I just decide to kite them a bit. Lure out the big guy. But damn do they hit hard. And after that, it's time for the Spider Cavern. And this is really where the build shows you if you do not want a big challenge and a long playthrough, this isn't for you. I mean, just look at how we're killing the pit shield to dead over here. And if this looks miserable, that's cause it is. 
But I dedicated myself to doing every single build of the game. So even this one. But I'm making it sound very crap right now, which, is, which isn't the case. Like, this build is a lot of fun, but you definitely get just super brick walled very, very hard in this game. And I know you can put points into Berserk as well to clear this, but... I just don't want to. Like, you have syn you have so many synergies with this character. You, you literally cannot have enough points to synergize everything with this build and have battle orders. Like, it's not a thing. Which is why in my last Frenzy Bob video, I didn't want to use battle orders because you just need the points for your synergy. Also, it just seems very fun to me to have like the maximum stamina synergy max as well and have like a 20 second Frenzy and be like a little engine that good, which just sounds like so much fun. I should retry the challenge at some point. Also, Pit Shield is almost dead. Whoop whoop. Much whoop. Yup, still going. And Pit Shield goes down. So that's that for the physical immune spiders. Oh no, there's another one. Well, well, you thought you were done? Here's another one. Physical immune spider flash more the sharp. And this one takes just as long. But I finally make it out of the forest just to fight some trashes over here and Storm Tree. Who actually should be called Storm Truck because he hits like a truck. And he also drops me my death mask, which is Blackthorn's face. Let's pre prevent monster heal. And a bunch of slow, which is nice. And then we had to have the Flayer Dungeon, where I encounter this miserable piece of spawn. So I try to run away, only to find this room and save and exit as fast as I can. So for attempt number two, I end up finding a ring, which is attack rating, mana, and lightning resist. And after that, I head towards the console. Who are just out healing me. Which makes me sad. So very, very sad. But as long as I just get one on one with them, <clears throat> two on one with them, I am able to take them down. So you really need to take them far away enough because they just keep healing. But finally, we get the flail. Finish off the last few. But oh man, this healing makes it so rough. The talk goes down. And Gallop Flamefinger is the last of them. And he too goes down. So we make our way into the Durans of Hate level 1 and this place is just called the Durans of Hate because you hate being here. So I get stuffed in a corner by a bunch of maulers. And I made a town portal that went back to town so because I knew I would come back into the group. But this way at least there are only 3 of them beating me and my mercenary so I take less damage. And my mercenary is next to me so we get to escape a lot easier. And then we have this door. If you're wondering how this character deals with dolls, this is it. By boring them to death. And remember that box of chocolates? Sometimes you get dolls. Sometimes you get f extra fast fanaticism dolls. This is just the game's way of saying I hate you. I mean, if, if the game had a love language, it, was, it would be hatred. So yeah, one by one we're taking the dolls down. And at this point I realize that not only are they fanaticism, they are also just horrible. So I decide to leave and head towards Mephisto. Who with the power of fast forward and crushing blow goes down pretty quickly. And drops us a Trangle's armor. And after that we go for the Mephisto farm. I need gear. I, I want a better helmet. I also don't want to die. I want better weapons. I want better gloves, better rings, 
better everything. So I need some gear. And I need to farm. So I end up finding bramble mitts, which are laying off hands. And these gloves are amazing. But I keep almost dying to Mephisto, uh, Mephisto Hell. So I go back into Nightmare and get some bail runs going. And I find a guardian code, a temp I find a guardian angel Templar code, which is an amazing mercenary armor. But I'm not using it over a Lionheart. That's not happening. My resistors aren't high enough. And I get a terrorized catacombs. Send some tracks. I don't end up using. I also found a mal rune, by the way. And now I have shale mal lum, and I only need a pollen. Also, this is nightmare terror zone, and look at the amount of damage that I'm taking. Holy crap! But anyway, I have shale mal lum, which means I'm a pollen rune away from getting an oh. So I decide to go for my hellforge, which gets me a gull rune. So I end up farming the lower kurast. Until I get a weapon for my mercenary and for myself. And I also find a ring. Which is a Manold. But yeah, I spent actual hours getting a obedience cryptic axe. And I find myself an oath. I, I just went at it at the lower Koras. I just needed the weapons. This character would not be beating the game with the weapons he had. And as you can tell, I'm still using my crushing blow flails. I have an M tier and an... Uh, and a Thal Io Nef for the crushing blow. And there we are, the final act. How far will I get? Well, not very far. So I end up making a Shul Io Thal as well after running away again for cannot be frozen. And that brings me to the Ancients who I just respawn. Because they started with horrible mods. But I managed to seclude Madog for a bit. And then I got Corlick on his own. Yeah, at this point, like I'm not dealing a lot of damage, even with my oath and my obedience, I'm still doing very low damage. But I just have 2700 HP and patience, so I'm gonna be fine. I mean, a barbarian like this is definitely just slow and steady wins the race. Because even with these mediocre at best weapons, I am getting through this. Also, how many souls do we have in the throne? Fuck you amount of souls, that's how many. So let's go and clear out the throne. By luring all of them out one by one because otherwise the second wave will revive them. You can also use find item or find potion on them, that also works. And one thing that actually surprised me is how good this character got through Lister and his minions. I mean, the, Even though this is fast forward, this is still... Look, it's not a hammered in, it's not a source. But it's super reasonable for what it is. And there are some very, very easy upgrades to do with this character. You, you could get a Korun, get a Hustle. You could get an Atma Scarab, get more amplified damage off a non-vile husk. You could get an Ariad from a Fisto Nightmare, that would also be amazing. But with that, we end up finally, because man, this run took forever. This was like a 25, 26 hour run, definitely way above my average. Even the rough edit of this was like twice my normal length. It's, it was one hell of a work to get this one done. But we do get there in a few seconds. There we go. With a head striker, a hearth, a lion heart, entropy heart, laying of heart, hands, raven touch, this Wilhelm sprite, chaos master, and these Natalia boots, and this mediocre oath. Oh, and I'll switch, I have the two rumors. These are my stats. And these are my skills. Hope y'all enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Bye bye. Hello and welcome. This is the Nuclear Rabbit. And today I'm playing Classic. Because I can. So first off. Things are different in Classic. Oh my god. That inventory. As usual with a Barbarian. We start off by buying some Scepters. Because those just deal the most damage. And we start off perfectly fine by almost dying in the underground passage. And then I head towards the counters who does not drop runes in classic. Because runes do not exist in classic. However, it's still the best place to level. Because there's so many unique bosses here. Like Viper Vex here who kills Blaze. And then I find out I can't revive her. So you can run out of mercenaries in classic. 
and you can't give gear to classic mercenaries either. Also, this is really dangerous. I should not be standing here. My life total makes me cry. And when your life total goes like that, just leave the game. Don't be me, leave the game. And then we are towards the Ontario fight. Which is just the same as on LOT. And then we have the horrors. Especially for Rasan, who dies. And Durga dies as well. Man, I am not good to my mercenaries, but luckily I'm rich, so I don't have to care about human lives. Anyway, I end up making a Tangerine Scepter for some damage. It's basically just re-rolling a magic weapon for some sockets and some damage. I end up finding a ring. It's a Nagel. It's attack rating. And then I almost die, and that is a problem, so I run away. But as long as it's not me, it's okay. And then comes the Duriel fight. Which is also just the same. The boss fights are all just exactly the same on Classic. The differences really are the resistances and the later difficulties. Your mercenaries. And there's something a bit different about Whirlwind, but we'll get to that later on in the video. Durio goes down and I have never been this happy to find a Berserker's armor. Because armors do not get sockets in this game. So you can't... Like, make a two socket flawed ruby or resistance armor or anything, it's not a thing. Meanwhile, I sneak into a cave and try to grab an eye. And then we look at the flux of the situation. Or we don't. And the council is just the same as on the resurrected version of the game, so LOD, whatever you want to call it. So we just punch them in the face and then they die. And just like in every other barbarian run, when you have a fair fight, things take forever. And I end up finding another unique ring. Okay, so there's no charms and no class specific items. So what ends up happening is that you find a lot more things that can actually roll unique. And inherently you just end up getting more uniques that way. I found a lot of uniques in this run, way more than I usually do. And that's because I'm just not finding charms. I'm not finding like class specific items that can't be unique. I'm just finding things that can actually roll unique. And you get a lot more of them that way. And I do have to say though, fighting without charms. It's actually really nice. I had so much inventory space to pick up stuff. It was amazing. It's the Chaos Sanctuary where we ring a few bells. The Hell's Bells, if you will. And then I make my version of a Tall 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 weapon. Because remember, no runes in here. And then we fight Diablo. Which is just the same fight as usual, so just dodge the lightning, make sure he's green or blue, it means he's taking damage. And run away when he tries to electrocute you, because that's not very nice of him. Who knew, the Lord of Terror, not a nice guy, who knew, who knew, who knew. Please don't fry me. But what I ended up finding the best way to play this is just going for the emulation of things that you do in the full game. So instead of a tall 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 sword, you go for a emerald sword. Instead of going for like a stealth, you try and get some resistances of your armor. You try and get some FHR off your belt, like stuff like that. But your gear is a lot less important here, which makes for a much more fluent playthrough. You really see that they balance the game around classic, you can really tell. I never felt over leveled, I never felt underpowered, I never felt like I was really in trouble, I never felt like I hit a brick wall in, or anything in the difficulty. So this was actually a very very enjoyable playthrough.
when you think about it, if you kill Diablo on normal and then would head into Nightmare Act 1, like that feels very fluent. It's Act 5 that always feels like a huge difficulty spike, like the Ancients and stuff feels way more difficult, the list feels way more difficult, but if you just go into Act 1 Nightmare, you'll be fine-ish? I said fine-ish, not fine. And in Nightmare we once again just run the counters with weapons that I just bought from an NPC because I could and they were just the best thing I had. I end up respecking on level 30. Because people told me Whirlwind would be decent. And I'm curious about that. Because Whirlwind on Classic hits every frame. Yes, you heard that correctly. Every frame. Every frame. Which means it's kinda good. Yeah. That's kind of insane. Also, I find two pieces of Saigons in the span of 15 seconds. And Saigons is just super endgame GG gearing classic. Because one thing that's also not there is mid-level or high-level uniques. That's just not there. There's no warhead. There's no lore. You know what you want? Saigons helm. It's the best. Want to know what the best weapon is for a barbarian? A rare Martel de Fer with some enhanced damage on it. I'm not even joking, it's the best weapon. I googled it. Anyway, I'm just fast forwarding through Nightmare because it felt like I actually played at this pace. Until I hit dolls. Dolls are really terrifying because if you're hitting at one frame, dolls explode way faster than you want them to. But the rest of the game on Nightmare is just... Complete fucking cakewalk, it's insane. I mean, look at this. Bye Diablo. The one thing that also happens when the best gear in the game just doesn't really exist. Is that the best farming spot in the game is Mephisto. On normal. Do you know how easy it is to farm Mephisto normal? Also, you can't gamble mid-level items. You're gonna gamble pies, you can't gamble a lance or a Martel de Fer. you just can't. As I mentioned, classic resistances, way less nerfed. And then we had to watch Corpfire, who is the first physical immune that we really need to kill. And as usual, it takes forever. And I decide that my damage is too low and that I need a better weapon, so I go to the lower course in Nightmare to find a magic lance that I do end up finding. Once I see it, then pick it up. And look at how much inventory space I have. And I just start re-rolling it. And I end up getting this brutal lance with 48 ED. I just end up putting perfect skulls into it. The perfect skull allows me to not use my Manalt so I can use my Cathan's ring. Because that's just GG gear. I respect because I want the spear mastery. So this is what I spec into. And then I farm the lower curse some more for a flawless skull, but I end up getting a goddamn stone of Jordan. I'm not joking, I found the stone of Jordan. Just casual stuff. And if you're thinking like, are you using that on a barbarian? It means resistances, critical hit, attack rating, everything you want, a soy gives you. And I also find a perfect skull. And now I have a 48 ED, double perfect skull lance. And that weapon, combined with the science gear, is GG. Like, that is just endgame gear for classic. It's so cool. There's no like, I need to find a war pike. I need to find this. I need to find that. Just find the lands, go to fucking town, beat the game. It's, it's just that. It's great. It's so sad that if you got a one frame whirlwind in the complete game with like Breath of the Dying and stuff, it would be way overpowered because this felt really fun. This I had so much fun doing this run. Also another mercenary bites the dust. And then we head towards the maggot lair. Where things are things and I'm just kind of sad. 
But you do manage to get through it with some nice aiming of your whirlwinds. Yeah, please don't get stuck. So basically just clear things out and well, don't do this. I'm stuck, I can't leave the game, I can't do anything. So I want to leave this place and I end up whirlwinding through. Until I hit some weaklings and I am very powerful again. But this barbarian did something no other barbarian a casual playthrough of a solo cell phone run has ever done. This barbarian felt very powerful. This felt like on the power level of a blizzard source or a hammer thing. So I can highly recommend playing classic with a barbarian. And there goes Duriel. And there go the rules. And this is me showing off. This is the one downside to the character. This is how long it takes to destroy my weapon. Yep, 30 seconds and I need to repair again. But after that we do head towards Travancore as usual. And from here on out the game is just the same until I hit Act 4 Hell Diablo. Luring the council out as usual. Don't have to worry about leaving behind your jar rune because there's no runes in the classic game. And even in Hell Act 3 you can see how powerful I am. Even the runs of hate is not a problem. Except for dolls. Because dolls are absolutely terrifying. If I press whirlwind here, I'm dead. One frame per attack kills all the dolls, which kills me. So I need to leap through. Until I hit Mephisto. Who, as you can tell, even with the random council member just showing up, is just not a problem. And there goes Mephisto. And after Mephisto, I figure like, okay, I'm just strong enough to beat the entire game. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run towards the end. So I just whirl in through Act 4. Ring the doorbell. Kill the idiots that it spawns. This is the most powerful barbarian I've ever put through the game. I mean, there's no way a solo cell found full game expansion barbarian. Especially with fucking whirlwind goes through the game this fast. It's just not gonna happen. This was That made this so enjoyable like you're playing a barbarian and you have a very Consistent pace of play instead of okay. I killed a thing. I need to repair. I need to buy pots I can kill one more thing instead you're just like actually doing stuff and it's amazing. I mean, look at that damage. This is nice. This is just nice. Like, it isn't even overpowered. A Hammer Din or a Blizzard Sword is still faster. Or a Mosaic Sin is way faster even, but... This is just nice. You're actually playing a Barbarian and you're getting through the game at a very, very reasonable pace. Like, this feels like an A-tier character for the expansion. However, you can't really do Act 5.
And here we have the actual final boss of the game, the Infector of Souls, because this is the hardest fight I had in the entire game. Because things got really close here. Like, I needed to be very careful here. But I do end up making it to town and then I'm just whirlwinding again. And here's the final fight of the game, this is Diablo. And I'm just chunking him and it's so satisfying. A classic barbarian is just super satisfying to play, can highly recommend. You don't need to farm Eldritch, you don't need to farm for the Ancients, you don't need to get to level 60, you don't need to find a good weapon. Everything is just balanced around being like this and it makes the game go by very smooth. I honestly thought Classic was a much smoother experience than the expansion. And there we have it, Diablo goes down. And here's my gear, like in LOD or whatever you want to call it, Resurrected, this will be a load of crap, like the only good item would be the SOJ. And this easily cleared the game, like no problems. And it was very satisfying, can highly recommend this, honestly I can. Here's my stats. And here we have the way cooler screen that you've beaten in the game. I am the king of classic. Thank you for watching. See y'all. Bye bye. GG. See you for the next one. Diablo 2 has some amazing sets. However, not all sets are created equal. You have the good stuff like Tal Rajas, Immortal Kings or Griswolds. You can easily clear the game with those kind of items. For each of those, every single piece is good. But when you combine them, they are fantastic tools for slaying every demon in your way. But for each of those kind of sets, you also have the obvious stinkers that need some help, like alders, and especially Trang Uls. There are some good pieces in there, like the alder boots, the Trang gloves and the Trang belt. However, wearing the full sets of those is not recommended. Both of these have obvious problems, the alder weapon damage is way too low, and even if you upgrade it to a devil star using the new Diablo 2 resurrected recipe, it's still just not good enough. And full Trang Uls turns you into a bloodlord, which sounds really fucking cool until you realize how bad that actually Actually is to play. You basically flush your FCR breakpoints down the drain and deal almost no damage. And we all obviously know the early game sets like Saigons, Hasaus and Dads, but there are also some forgotten sets that no one ever really uses except for maybe a single piece. Which brings us to the Disciple set. It's a 5 piece set consisting of Telling of Beads, Rite of Passage, Dark Adherent, Credendum and the only useful piece Laying of Hands. So can a set like that beat the game? Let's try and find out. We start our journey as usual by running away from Rock and Nishu cause he's terrifying. After that we make our way to level 6 and because I'm using this run to check if I can beat the game with the disciple set, I might as well use the shared stash for all of it. So at level 6, I equip two pieces of dads for some IAS, cannot be frozen and all resist. And those two combined seriously are better than the entire disciple set. Even with those combined, we aren't ready though to deal with the dangers of the world just yet, and we have our first save and quit in the underground passage. So we level some more and start equipping some cool swords in steel and blood crash and scimitars. We also go ahead and equip a Hulk mail for some cannot be frozen, an Eye of Atlich and a Tarnhelm. One of the things we will need a lot of in this run is experience, cause all of this has a very high level requirement. So I start farming the jail for some, cause champion dark ones are great to get some level up. After getting the level I want it's time to start getting towards Act 5, so we battle Antariel and follow it up by killing Durian. Some commenters have been recommending me to try the Act 3 mercenaries, so in Act 3 I decide to hire the fire mercenary because he has enchant which will help me with my attack rating and the fire damage will help me a ton with physical immunes. In Act 3 I also treat myself to some charms, I mean if I'm using my shared stash I might as well go all out and finally use some of the stuff I've been finding the past years. And I also upgrade to double strength swords. After obliterating Mephisto he drops me a berserker armor, which gives me plus one barb skills and I quickly use that to kill Diablo as well. I have a bit of a close call in the fight but decide to actually play the game and dodge the rest of his attacks. And take him down. 
I get the health orb that I forgot about and level myself up on Eldritch so I can start equipping some of my final gear. It starts off with Rite of Passage and Telling of Beats. These two combined give me an additional 150 defense, which would be very cool if defense did anything in this game. After almost killing myself by autopiloting into a fire shrine, I go and get myself some big boy weapons into Alibaba's with some shield runes in them. The magic find on those immediately pays off as I get a massive upgrade to my equipment. I find another pair of Rite of Passage and these have two base defense more. A massive improvement. I also use Bindle Skin to level till I can equip a Guillaume's Helm for some crushing blow and open wounds and get some head strikers to go along with it. With those combined I'm going to be able to plow through Nightmare without a problem. So I make quick work of Bale and head into Nightmare where I almost get slaughtered by some random cult rat boss pack. At this point I'm wildly overpowered though and it shows in the Ontario fight. I make short work of her despite my mercenary going down to take a nap. And after the fight I decide to go back to normal to level up some more on Pindle Skin until I hit level 49. Cause I wanna wear my third piece of gear, the Dusk Adherent, which gives a whopping 11 poison damage as it says bonus. I mean really? 11? What were they thinking? 11 poison damage? What? What the hell do I care about 11 poison damage? Why is that a thing? Why is that a reward? Like it should be 1100 or something to be relevant at all. Come on, it's a level 50 item basically, why do I get 11 fucking poison damage, who the fuck cares, I, I toss chipped emeralds all the time, why is it a set bonus? And even though I don't know what to socket into it yet, I do put a hole in there cause holes are fun. What not fun though are dolls, dolls are terrifying, I have no interest in dying to them so I hope to not encounter too many of them, however I find them in the sewers where they remind me who's boss immediately. After surviving those I make short work of Mephisto again and head towards Act 4 where the game goes in full fuck you mode and starts throwing in some souls that end up pushing me back towards the start of the plains of despair. After a long and harsh battle I fight my way through it and I find myself in the river of flame, ready to get my health watch but it grants me a shield rune, but that's okay because this is a shared stash round so if I need anything I can just go and grab it. And the struggle continues on as we head into the chaos sanctuary where despite my best efforts I am getting my health total pushed back by Infector and his helpers. I figured that with some of the best weapons in the game and 3 pieces of a set I'd flatten everything in no time flat, but it's not the case and it makes me very worried about hell. Luckily for a game about farming bosses those are actually the weakest part, they're really really easy so we hack down Diablo like he's nothing cause we're gonna ignore that he just did me a thousand damage in one attack and we make our way towards act 5 and I'm glad to be there because we need to farm some levels and equip some stuff. We start off our level farm by trying to defeat Eldritch but he kicks our ass so we're going to try our luck at Pindleskin instead and at some point during farming Pindleskin skin I found a superior Gnarled staff that I sold to Mala and when I checked for weapons with the Echoe mod for plus 3 war cries on them for a boost to battle orders and some more HP I saw that the staff had quite the markup she's selling it back at 2.3 million gold. I mean Mala's hustling that millionaire lifestyle damn. After getting sad at trying to farm Pindle and Eldritch I decided that my best course of action is to go and finish off Nightmare so I can do some bill runs cause those are obviously easier. The Worldstone Keep level 2 is of course filled with souls, cause why wouldn't it be? But I do end up hitting level 63, which brings me to my other forgotten set. Bullcutter's Sacred Charge is a set that even got buffed recently. This sword used to have knockback, which made it completely unusable. So they removed that. To improve it even more, I added in a 40 enhanced damage and a minus 15 requirements jewel. Cause I honestly wouldn't know what else to do with a jewel like that. It ends up saving me 28 strength and 16 dexterity, which means I get 44 more vitality. We've also hit the level for the one good piece of the disciple set, the laying of hands. With its 20 IAS and 50 fire resist, it's already a very very reasonable option, but the 350% damage to demons completely puts this over the top of almost any other glove out there for melee characters. With our new items we make mincemeat out of Ventar the Unholy and his friends before we make our way to Bale who also goes down very quickly. We farm some more bale for levels until we hit the final pieces of our gear. The Credendum, which grants us the full set bonus of plus 2 skills and 50 all res. Our final piece of gear as well, the Bulkathos Tribal Guardian. Together they combine to give us the most theme heavy bunch of stats I've ever seen. It's 2 swords, 2 skills, 200 attack rating, 200 damage to demons and undead, 200 fire damage, 20 deadly strike and 200 defense. At this point I wish they would have just given it 20 life leech as well. 
well to go all in on the theme. I mean, it's not like it's overpowered now or anything. I do have to say though, damn, the Volcato set looks good on your character. But with that, it's time for the final test. Can we beat Hellbale with these crummy old forgotten sets? First, let's see what we got going on in the stats department. Our resists are good, but considering we are dedicating 7 slots of gear to these two high-end sets, it's kind of sad that we aren't maxed out on everything. Especially the 54 lightning resist is a very sad thing to see after this much commitment, compared to the 281 fire resist we managed to achieve, which is plenty to do the main game. I mean, come on, it's probably enough to do ubers as well. If they ever plan to go back to tweaking these sets, that's a thing they could do. Just pointing it out there. Our HP is very low. The BK set demands a lot of stats. Even with that in mind, we are barely hitting 750 HP, which is sad. Damage and attack rating wise, we are looking fine. Nothing too special, but at least it's not worryingly low. I've definitely had solo self found runs with more damage. One thing I've never had on one of my solo self found runs though is 550% extra damage to demons and the 200% damage to undead as well. I'm hoping those will pull us through. We also do not get cannot be frozen from either of these sets. So I'm wearing a raven frost to compensate for that. With us being all big buff and smart now, we go ahead and find that little prick of a ruckin issue and get our revenge by one shotting the absolute living crap out of him. And in the jail we find a fine small charm of frost. This is an amazing charm. The cold damage slows the enemies and the 320 damage attack rating is a perfect roll. So it's crowd control, damage and attack rating, everything we want and need. We end up getting one more final upgrade to our gear. We find another pair of demonite boots. Once again with two more defense. That two defense now makes us unkillable, I'm sure of it. In the catacombs level 4 we open what is essentially a door into a Resident Evil game. Once opened the entire zombie horde just waltzes in. Perfect timing to test out that 200% damage to undead. So okay, that's 6 hits to kill a random boss, that is rough. Them being immune to fire and physical also doesn't help, it's a good thing we spec into berserk as well. The Ontario fight itself, while smoothly, definitely isn't going as fast as I'd hoped considering the whole dedicating all my gear to this thing, and in the sewers in Act 2, things get even worse cause life leech doesn't work off the undead because well, they're dead and we have life leech, undead, life leech, get it? So we end up getting a close call. And I figured this would only be a problem against the undead and it would be manageable for the rest of the game. However, the Claw of Hyper Temple quickly proves me wrong. I need a bunch of rejuves to even get through a random boss pack and things are looking bad, like really bad. This is getting way too risky. Something needs to change if I want to make it sure I get there. Every single door is a massive struggle now and this is just act 2. The really hard part isn't even here yet. With the Claw Viper Temple having quickly dissolved every bit of faith I had in my setup, I need to look for something that helps me survive. I end up sacrificing a bit of my already not great damage by replacing my Guillaume's helmet for a vampire gaze. It gets me life leech and most importantly damage reduction. It also grants me mana leech which is a massive quality of life upgrade for this build because we didn't have that either. Everything starts looking much more like it actually has a shot at surviving while going through the arcane sanctuary. We aren't killing things fast by any means but we are getting through them and not slurping pot non-stop. Between Enchant and Berserk we are even going places with the physical immunes. Things can still really hurt though and ours are still terrifying, this is not a dawn deal by a long shot. Boss fights however are still a joke, Duriel has a hard time even moving my health orb before dropping to his death. Trashes however hit a lot harder, one little trick you can do here is to lure them to the bridge so you don't have all of them punching you at once. But even with that it gets way too close, their AI ends up breaking because Stormtree didn't come over. And they were trying to get back to him because of their leash. And that resulted in easy kills for me, but if that didn't happen I had a big problem. And even with that, our troubles aren't over yet. Act 3 is once again proving it is a gauntlet. In the Flayer Dungeon level 2, the game throws a boss back of dolls my way, which I have to bravely watch Jabari deal with. But he really isn't into it either, resulting in me running away like a little girl while hoping the Merc's AI does its thing. The console uses fire damage and we have 280 fire resists, so we can just stand there and slice away at them. It takes a bit, but this is what this pop is built for. 
Finally, something that my dedicated gear does well. Took long enough. Mephisto goes down and we head towards the River of Flame, where we lose a fight with some Urdas. Like, we have 550% damage to demons and can beat some random ass Urdas. It's, yeah, we just left the game. From here on out though, every single boss pack of Urdas is a massive fight. Every single fight we have to kite and fight, we have to properly position every single thing and even if they still crit, we could die. Our Hellforge gets us a ball rune before moving along into the Chaos Sanctuary, which is an area that this build actually does rather nicely. With some proper kiting, we manage to get through the Ghost Guy. The fanaticism aura of the size and using the corners of the map, we manage to whittle down Infectus Venom Lords until we can just take down the group with just a few close calls. Diablo starts off the fight by trying to run away, but we got him cornered in his own pentagram. Where he tries to do some stuff. But besides a few slaps, we have nothing to worry about here. In Act 5, we really start to get into trouble. Random bosses start almost one-shotting us. If we weren't wearing a case, we would have been dead twice already. Sorry, three times already. Man thinks it's hard in Act 5. As usual, we have to split up the Ancients. We won't win a 3 on 2 on them. However, beating Madog down in a little corner is definitely something I can do. I give it a few tries to see if I can 2 on 1 them, but I end up almost dying every single time I try. So I end up luring Talik to the same dark corner and beat away at him. Kalik can 2 shot me if I'm not careful and I can 200 shot him so yeah that's a fair fight for you. Honestly though, I'd rather be playing as one of the ancients at this point. They seem much more powerful than I do. Even though I've dedicated 7 slots of gear to this, this build feels weaker than even a lot of my solo cell phone runs. I have plus 5 skills, 2 of each of the set bonuses and 1 of the amulet. But it just doesn't matter, this feels very weak, these sets need help. And after battling my way through some death laws, I made my way towards the bail wave. The first one isn't much of a problem, the second one however is very rough. I barely do enough damage to keep up with the mages getting revived. I end up luring them a bit away and trying to use the time it buys me to kill the unravelers. My mercenary also does an excellent job of tanking them and buying me time. I still have another near death moment though, but I do end up getting through it. Pack 4 is another pack that I just need to lure out, but I want to give a massive shout out to Jabari for staying alive through all of this. People recommended the Act 3 Mercenaries and I'm glad I've tried one. Jabari has been very impressive. The enchant and the fire damage have been amazing asset and I will definitely use the Act 3 Mercenaries more in the future. For our final bailwave, it's a matter of luring them out one by one, because I'll probably lose the fight if there's too many of them around. Warcry saves my ass here as well. If I hadn't had Warcry, I'd been dead many times over. And with Lister down, it's time for bail. We want him to not teleport a lot and every time he spawns a clone, we need to go back to town for 8 seconds to despawn the clone. You can position away from the tentacles quite nicely, they don't have a lot of range so it's really all about you and Bale. The mercenary doesn't matter that much here either because Bale has a ton of fire resist. And that's not a knock on the mercenary by any means because he really did very well for himself. I've been very impressed with him, much more than with my own character. And can't wait to try out the cold and lightning ones. Our kind of lowish attack rating is starting to bite us in the ass here though, we have a lot of trouble hitting Bale. It may have been better to put an Eth or a Jar rune in my weapons, but it is what it is. And we do end up finally taking him down. Our quest is complete, we have beaten the game with two crummy old sets. We used the BK set and the Disciple set to clear the game. 
Honestly though, these sets need a lot of help. The BK set could just use some flat damage or something. It doesn't have to be as good as Grief. It really doesn't. Grief should be nerfed. But I would want it to at least keep up with Oath or something. I also wish the BK ring would become a part of the BK set. It would make set rings relevant and it would be really cool and flavorful. For the Disciple set, I'd give the boots cannot be frozen instead of half freeze duration and probably give the armor a bunch of sockets. Probably 1 to 4 at random. It's, it would make it a much cooler find and it's a very big buff but this armor feels blatantly unusable as is. The belt could get 15 damage and magic damage reduced and maybe like 3 to 5% mana leech would solve a lot of its problems as well. The set bonuses could become something like 100 poison damage over 1 second if we want to keep it. But I honestly just rework all of it. I dump all of it except for the plus 2 skills and the 50 resist all. None of them matter in the slightest. It could give faster cast rate, it could give some increased attack speed or something. I don't know, but something good at least, it really needs it. And with that, here's the final build I ended up using for this challenge. It's just your standard Frenzy Barbarian set up, but it seemed cool with the Bulgatal set. In the end, this build really needs to help. It barely cleared the game, and that is with me bringing out the good stuff in Jewels and Charms as well. For the Mercenary, a Shaco and a Wispike would probably work well. Bear it as a shield if you can get an armor that gives him some strength. A unique Dusk Shroud with one of his skills will probably help him as well. And with that, all that is left to say is thank you for watching, see you in the next one.